Hi, my name is Tom Weldon. I am the founder, chairman, and CEO of Ponce de Leon Health, maker of Rejuvent. The company objectives, obviously, is to create a great return for our investors, but we're primarily interested in extending the disease-free portion of human life, life health span, uh, by 20% or more, and lifespans by about 10% and uh, to lower the lifetime healthcare cost per person by 20% or more. And if our anecdotal human data uh, turns out to be true in our randomized uh, placebo-controlled trial, then we are likely to accomplish those objectives. The core thesis behind the company was to see if it would be possible to create a grass generally regarded as safe cocktail like the AIDS cocktail was developed 20 years ago to address um, AIDS. The individual drugs in that cocktail had some effectiveness, but they really weren't fabulous. Uh, when the drugs went off patent, it was economical com to combine them into the cocktail, which is still a uh, standard of care 20 years later. So we took a look at using uh, non-pharmaceutical uh, compounds in a combination to try and hit enough aging pathways where we might have a clinical effect on aging. We tried this at the Buck Institute, uh, which was our partner in uh, the first uh, mouse cohort and um, found that it was successful. Uh, and then uh, actually in the C. elegant model first, we tried dozens and dozens of combinations um, and were able to down select and then move into the mouse model. So why is aging an issue? Um, you know, on the top blue line there, um, representing from birth to morbidity onset to death, uh, obviously that's historically what's happened. The disease approach is what we've been focused on for the last 50 years. Basically you treat uh, once you're ill. Um, that has had the effect all of modern medicine, drugs, devices, lifestyle changes, has given us an additional 10 years, or essentially two years every decade. The purpose of longevity research is to extend health span. In other words, you get those 10 years, but you postpone the onset uh, of morbidity as expressed in the uh, dark green curve there. The holy grail is the light green curve where we compress morbidity itself, thus disproportionately extending health span or the healthy years and compressing the period of time in which you're truly sick. Uh, and that area under the curve basically represents money and suffering. Uh, and the, uh, the work that we've done in the animal model, uh, mammal model, small mouse model uh, with um, Brian Kennedy at the Buck uh, is the first published paper uh, showing that you can compress morbidity, increase lifespan and disproportionately increase health span. So what are the causes of human aging? Our opinion is that aging is a software problem, not a hardware problem. And so if the genome is the hardware, the epigenome is the software. And aging causes changes to the epigenome due to damage and basically the passage of time. And the end result of those changes uh, in the epigenome um, basically cause uh, methylation patterns to change. So rather than being genetically predetermined, our lifespan is largely epigenetically determined. And the way Rejuvent works, the MOA basically is, is it rebalances your epigenetic DNA methylation pattern to one that you had when you were younger, resulting in gene expression changing, uh, thus you know, reversing uh, epigenetic aging. So when you're born, um, basically all of your DNA repeat sites are methylated and all your CPG island sites are demethylated. And over time, as the epigenome changes, those uh, become reversed. And the way the product works basically is that it moves it back towards uh, an earlier state by remethylating the repeat sites and demethylating the CPG island sites. So as I'd mentioned, the uh, first uh, mouse cohort was done at the Buck Institute. And what you're seeing here, basically they are the Jax Black sex model, sex model. The uh, group on the left is the test group. These are genetically identical mice, all the same age. Uh, the control group is on the right. 
And so these mice were, the pictures were taken about the human equivalent of 70 years old. And the test group basically got 2% of their mouse feed with uh, calcium alpha glutarate and the control group had regular mouse feed. And you can see there's quite a striking difference uh, in the phenotypes. One of the other powerful signals that was noticed was a change in inflammation. Um, basically, we uh, did some studies at the Buck to determine that uh, the compound was able to um, basically affect uh, senescent cell signaling, stop cytokine signaling, which then reduces the uh, inflammation factors and reduces uh, tumor formation and growth. So the summary of the mammal data uh, from that first cohort was on the average between male and female, lifespan was extended 12%. Um, health span was increased, increased uh, by an average of 41% and morbidity uh, was compressed by 46%, which is pretty amazing. And so for the fem female cohort, the, uh, the product you know, showed that we statistically significant, uh, sign we were statistically significant for postponing the onset of frailty, graying of hair, hair loss, kyphosis, tremors, and gait disorders. And then the second cohort was where we uh, added all the combinations and came up with the uh, commercial version of the product, which was sex specific. And uh, that's the product that's commercially available now. So the conclusion of uh, the paper was that it's important that calcium alpha keta glutarate was administered starting at 18 months of age and it still had robust effects. This is valuable since human clinical studies are likely to be initiated at a similar relative time point during aging. If translated to humans, this effect would be an ideal outcome, extending lifespan, but more importantly, reducing the deep debilitating uh, uh, period of functional decline and disease management that plague many aging individuals. So interestingly, human plasma AKG levels declined tenfold between the ages of 40 and 80. And the molecule is not available in uh, the typical human diet, making direct supplementa supplementation the only feasible route to restore levels. So you can't just eat your vegetables and solve the problem. So given its grass status and human safety record, our findings point to a potential safe intervention that may impact important elements of aging and improve the quality of life in the elderly population. So I was uh, uh, essentially customer number one, patient number one. Uh, I've been on the product uh, over two years. So um, one of the things that Dr. Kennedy suggested was, he said, we need some you know, common understood biomarkers. Uh, DNA methylation is one we'll talk about in a moment, but the other one was common blood work. And so I uh, actually had a uh, physical done in September of 2018. I had been taking uh, alpha catagluterate, which I was purchasing off the internet when we found that it was working well in the mouse model. Unfortunately, in humans, uh, what you can buy on the internet has almost no effect at all. And even though I'd been on that for about a year, you can see that my cholesterol was relatively high, uh, triglycerides high, and then my physician was particularly concerned uh, about my LDL at 124. My CRP has always been relatively low. So he prescribed Zetia in an attempt to get my LDL below 100. Um, basically, it should have dropped it to about 90. Uh, Right after I took this, I got the first prototype production run of uh, the male product and started taking Rejuvent. And then, you know, you can see about seven months later, I had remarkable uh, changes, positive changes. Many dropped at around 70%, including CRP, which is a measure of chronic inflammation. So we now have a little bit more uh, customer data. These are subjects, the only ones we were able to find that were willing to take a blood test prior to going on the product and then took another blood test uh, three to six months later after being on Rejuvent. You can see that they all had uh, reductions, some quite large, uh, in chronic inflammation, CRP. But this was the thing that was most remarkable from my perspective. Um, this is data from uh, True Me Labs, our, our partner that developed the um, DNA methylation test. And I asked the CEO uh, how many customers she could identify that had taken the DNA methylation test 
prior to starting on the product and then was on the product for at least four to six months. And I was trying to assess the likelihood of success in our human clinical study, which has uh, endpoints, well, T0, and then three months, six months, and then nine months. And then took a second test after uh, four to six months. And the average reduction across all 17 patients was eight and a half years. And the black uh, graphs show changes that were obviously trending well, but not quite statistically significant. And the red, which represents about two thirds of those uh, customers, were statistically significant. So among those responders, the average reduction or reversal was 12 years. So we um, are actually on our fourth mouse cohort and we're trying uh, a variety of additional combinations in an attempt to come up with an even better uh, product uh, as maybe a potentially uh, version two. We're still a ways away on, on that. So the market is huge. You know, Citibank picked modifying aging as one of the top 10 most disruptive technologies for the next decade. This I found particularly interesting. Um, this was a survey uh, by UBS Private Bank uh, talking to very wealthy people. What percentage of your wealth would you sacrifice to guarantee an additional 10 years of healthy life? So if you had one to $2 million, you'd give up a third. If you had 50 million or more, you'd give up $25 million in order to pick up another decade of healthy life. So our go-to-market strategy, we have a randomized placebo controlled, we're enrolling 100 patients to get 80 in the trial underway. Um, and it should allow us uh, to be able to advertise, assuming that the trial is anywhere near as good as the pilot study has been uh, to reverse the human aging process as measured by DNA methylation testing. And so we are direct to consumer subscription model sold over the internet. Uh, we also provide the DNA methylation test from our partner and future products could include probiotics, pet nutrition, longevity bar, and electrolyte uh, sport drink. One of the common problems associated with direct to consumer, especially in the VMS vitamins, minerals, and supplement space is that the dropout rate can be as high as 40 to 50% per month. Our dropout rate is less than 10% uh, after being on the market for a year in a limited launch. So how does, and, and everybody in the uh, direct to consumer business tracks a certain number of industry met metrics. Lifetime value, for example, ours is 650 on the average after 11 months, and the industry target is about 324 months. Our repurchase rates, after 11 months, 85% of uh, each month's uh, product are repeat orders, and the industry averages 12 to 40% uh, percent in 12 months. Our average order value is 135, the industry is maybe 30 to about 100 on the high end. Our return on acquisition spend, or essentially the ROI, five out of the first eight initial groups flip to profitability in 11 months. You know, the industry averages it takes nine to 18 months to get one to flip. Our repeat orders in the start year, 4.9 in 11 months, the industry averages one and a half to two and a half in a year. And our CAC, our customer acquisition cost, it's been in a test mode for us this first year because we haven't had enough cash to really do a, an aggressive launch and, and purchase uh, paid media. So we've been testing the message, testing price, testing the offerings, et cetera. It was 330 in test mode, although recall our lifetime value is 650, so even though that's high, it makes sense. Our objective is to get that down below 200 and the industry average is two to two and a half times the retail price in non-test mode. Our retail price is $150. So our progress since the Series A funding, we launched the product in the men's and women's uh, formulation. We have first in man evidence of reversing epigenetic aging via DNA uh, methylation testing. We began enrolling our 80 patient randomized double blind placebo controlled human trial, primarily for marketing reasons. We've identified the probable MOA of rejuvent. We have cohorts two and three in mouse studies, uh, product commercialization, uh, auditing and contracting with supply chains, marketing, branding, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, our finalized data from the first cohort demonstrates statistically significant increase in both lifespan 
by an average of 12%, health span by an average of 41, and compressing morbidity by an average of 46%. There's also been several high profile comparable financings and two IPOs in the longevity space that have recently occurred at very attractive valuations. We have seven product patent applications pending and one US process patent in, uh, pending and then several uh, foreign filings as well. Those are our financial results, uh, our, our, excuse me, uh, forecasts. I wish there were our results. Uh, you can take a look at those at your leisure. And those are the sources of the funds. You know, basically it's customer acquisition, uh, marketing, general admin, and then continued R&D. And uh, $10 million gets us to cash flow break even. $5 million gets us to the end of the clinical trial, and then some runway to raise uh, additional capital. Those are the continuity assumptions for the forecast. The management team, I won't go into much detail other than to mention just a couple. Um, so myself, I've been doing this for a long time and the companies that I have personally founded, I've created over $2 billion in shareholder value. Uh, Ed Houck, uh, who's currently an advisor, will become the chief operating officer. Upon the B round of funding, Ed is currently a partner at Nutritional uh, Business Advisors, which is the leading uh, consulting business in the VMS space. And he's also been either the CEO or COO of three other companies in the space, all of which he sold uh, at above average uh, returns. And then, of course, Dr. Brian Kennedy, um, extremely well-known, former CEO of the Buck, currently is running the Center for Health and Wellness at the National University of Singapore and one of the leading agent researchers in the world. Uh, in terms of comparable financings, um, you know, Elysium would probably be a very good comparable. Uh, they did a $20 million B round at an 85 million pre about three years ago. Uh, Juvenescence is the most recent, raised a $100 million B round at a $400 million pre. Neither of those companies, none of the companies on the list here have any anecdotal evidence in humans that they can reverse the human aging process or any mammalian data showing that they can compress morbidity, increase lifespan, and dramatically increase health span. Those are the patents that have been filed. So in summary, um, we expect to be able to get to cash flow break even about two and a half years after we close on 10 million in additional equity capital. Uh, very favorable risk profile based on the existing mammal data. You know, the first cohort suggests uh, the first demonstrated increase in um, health span, lifespan, and compression of morbidity early but extremely encouraging DNA and blood biomarker, first in man data, eight and a half year reversal of uh, human biologic age. A double blind randomized placebo controlled human trial is now enrolling at Indiana University Medical Center. It's a huge market opportun uh, opportunity with potentially profound positive effects on society. There was a study done in Australia about three years ago, economic study showing that if you could increase um, human health span by eight years, which if you recall, that was kind of our average um, in our uh, pilot study, the GDP of that country, assuming everybody in, in the country took the product, would increase in the long run by about 50%. And there's almost no social issue you couldn't address by increasing the GDP of say the United States by 50%. No anticipated regulatory reimbursement or safety issues. Eight US patents pending, multiple foreign patents filed. We've launched a proprietary sex specific product, Rejuvent, associated with an established longevity brand, the Buck. The exit strategy is an IPO in three years after the first raise at around $100 million monthly run, run rate. And so for more information, you know, you can contact me. We have a fully populated data room uh, which we could give you access to if you were a potential investor. So that's the product and uh, it is available um, basically on the internet at rejuvent.com. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>